drivers? What's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Part 3. Unwind and enjoy. If you like what you see, hit subscribe and let your friends know about Thread Tonic. Count 1. Not technically a truck driver, but I used to work as a field technician in the oil industry, so I spent a lot of time driving through remote areas of Canada at odd hours. One very strange and eerie experience sticks with me. I was in either northeast BC or northwest Alberta, can't remember the exact location, driving late at night when I noticed a very large black shape on the road in front of me. Thinking it was a moose, I stepped on the brakes coming to a stop only a few feet from it. Despite being so close and having my headlights shining directly on it, I still couldn't tell what I was looking at. It was vaguely the shape of a four-legged animal but very big, probably about six feet tall. Aside from that, it was completely featureless. I couldn't make out any details whatsoever, no shine from its eyes, nothing. And then I noticed there were more of them in the ditch on both sides of the road. Five or six, or maybe more, all the same as the black shape on the road in front of me. None of them were moving. They didn't look like physical objects or living things. More like just large patches of absolute darkness. After I got over my shock, dread started to set in, and I drove around the thing on the road and sped off. I don't really believe this was a paranormal experience. I had been driving for eight plus hours through the middle of the night, and I was exhausted. Most likely, it was a hallucination caused by lack of sleep and spending too long staring straight ahead into the dark. But it was still a very unsettling experience. Account 2. I work for a railroad. Not necessarily remote, but sometimes it's just a conductor and engineer cruising along Placidus 10 Melopouas on very isolated, fairly wooded track. I've heard a few older guys mention something about a family, or a man with a suitcase, something along those lines, don't really remember, walking down the track with no concerns. Constant blowing of the horn, flashing of the lights, etc., they just kept walking down the track and then disappearing. Near Weatherly, PA, I also experienced a pretty intense trip myself one night coming home from New Jersey. I saw my first dead body lying along the rail, which in itself was kind of interesting. Then, the only other part of my trip where we were required to run at a slow speed, I heard the craziest blood-curdling scream I have ever heard in my entire life. One of the nights I will probably remember until I retire. Account 3. COVID was raging, and there was a truck stop, the only one around for a long while. I stopped there and parked, needing to pee badly, but the actual truck stop was closed with no available restrooms, and I had no empty bottles or anything to pee in, so I was desperate and tried to find a secluded spot. The best place I could find was in some bushes. As a man, my options are much more plentiful. Unfortunately, the spot would be visible to one trucker that was parked nearby, and I saw that he was awake in his cab in the daylight, so I thought it would be polite to approach him and say, I'm sorry, man. Their restrooms are closed, and I'm gonna go pee in those bushes right there. I wanted to let you know so I don't weird you out. He was an older guy and responded, No, man, you can just go between my tractor and trailer and pee there on the ground. No one can see you there. I chuckled and said, Thanks, sir, but if I'm going to do that, I'll just do it between my own tractor and trailer. And I started walking back to my truck. He called out, No, no, do it between my tractor and trailer. Something was really disturbing, though admittedly funny, about a guy insisting I pee between his truck and trailer. Account 4. I'm also not a truck driver, but I do drive five hours one way to work. My shift gets out at 11.30 p.m., so if I've got a second wind, I can usually make it the whole way home. Sometimes I have to stop to nap. So I recall getting tired shortly before Binghamton, which is about 1.5 hours from where I work. This exit with a gas station I stop at frequently is about 15 minutes before Binghamton. Anyway, I stop, gas up, buy my snacks and smokes, and put up a sign in my window saying, I'm okay, I just have four more hours of driving to do, please don't knock. I've had that happen countless times. And if I'm really out, people think I'm dead and call the cops, then I have to convince the cops that I just worked 32 hours with about four hours of sleep, not nodding out on heroin or whatever. God bless the people for thinking they're helping and I don't want them to stop, hence the note LOL, and I push the seat back to nap. I have an alarm set for 20 minutes. This is about 1 a.m. Next thing I know, it's 6.30 a.m. and I'm on some back road with houses, but also fields and I'm driving super slowly. 
I have no idea where I am and how I came to be here. I don't have a lot of service bars, but I plug in my mom's address and hope directions pop up. It does, and it takes me to a highway entrance in Harpersville, NY. Okay, in about 20 minutes, I'm back on track. I don't recall how long before this story happened, but I had gotten into an accident falling asleep at the wheel. Totaled my car. Got a nice eyebrow scar and nosebleed. Back more messed up than it had been, but otherwise okay. Got screwed by my insurance too. But then this happens and it scared the fuck out of me. Assuming I woke up to my alarm, it would have been like 1.30 a.m. And I came to about 6.30 a.m. What the hell was I doing for five hours? How did I not hit anything? Checked out the car. It was fine. How was I driving the speed limit? Because I imagine any faster or slower would have gotten the cops on me. Just how? Or was I asleep the whole time but still slept, drove about 25 minutes until I really woke up? The terror allowed me to complete the drive. Account 5. Story handed down from my grandfather. In his youth, he was a lumberjack in rural Washington or Oregon, which according to him was fairly uneventful save one incident. He and three others were taking a car to their residences late one night, technically morning, and he and the other guy in the back seat passed out while the passenger seat kept up a conversation to make sure the driver stayed alert. Sometime in the night, he and the other guy get woken up to the car screeching to a halt. Both the driver and passenger are staring out the window, swearing and pale-faced. All four get a good, long look at something really tall standing in the headlights down the road, black and wide. The driver did the fastest three-point turn my grandfather had ever seen and took a different route. They came to the consensus that this was probably a bear that got spooked by the car and tried to scare it off. Whatever it was, my grandpa proceeded to retell the story at every family get-together afterwards. So it's pretty burnt into my memory. Account 6. Reno NV. A place on the north side of town, way off the freeway towards an old military road. I got there early at like 1 a.m. They didn't open till 6 a.m. The facility was closed, so no one around and I just pulled into the lot and parked off to the side. I went to sleep and was woken shortly after to someone knocking on the door, window, firmly to the point the truck shook. I jumped out of bed thinking they were there already and wanted to offload me early. I got to the door and no one was there, so I stepped down thinking they were behind the trailer looking at the door seal or something. No one around, I looked under the truck and around, absolutely no one. No wind or bad weather, not another person around. I jumped in the truck and pulled out of there as fast as I could and went and parked in a nearby truck stop. Still can't explain it. I mean, I guess I can justify I could have imagined the sound, but the truck shaking was definitely real, so I don't know. Account 7. Not a trucker. But I had a college teammate from Miami who swears by a story to this day. He and his girlfriend were making the drive to Naples late at night on a two-lane road through the Everglades. They had been in a line of cars behind an 18-wheeler for several miles. She fell asleep, and he was searching for something to listen to on the radio. Only one station came in clearly enough to be tolerable, so he gave it a listen. The DJ came on and said something along the lines of, The stars are extra bright in the Everglades tonight. If you're driving through there, pull off and take a look. He said he normally wouldn't even think of it. But for some reason, he felt compelled that night. He woke up his girlfriend. She was annoyed and didn't want to, but he convinced her it would be worth it. They stopped and just took in the stars for five to ten minutes. He said it was the most amazing sky he'd ever seen. They got back on the road and drove a few more minutes before coming across a massive accident. The truck they had been following had jackknifed and taken out several vehicles that were following. He said there were multiple fatalities, but I've never been able to find a news story about it to confirm. It was probably around 2005. They most likely would have been involved if not for that random DJ on the only radio station that came in that night. Account 8. I'm not a truck driver, but the story is from a truck driver. I was working the overnight shift from Friday night into Saturday morning at a gas station. At about 6 a.m., a semi pulled into the fuel aisle. The driver got out and almost ran into the store, clearly shaken. His face was completely white, and he was obviously upset. My first thought was that the poor man had hit someone on the road. We get a lot of drunks walking across a four-lane highway in front of the store. So I asked what was wrong. He looked at me for a second and said, I'm not crazy. Now I'm thinking, 
Great, I'm here all alone and this guy is losing it. I said, of course not. I just saw something huge on the side of the road. Like a deer or a bear? We had a bear get into the dumpster last week. No bigger than a bear on its back legs. Maybe a big person? It picked up a dead buck on the side of the road and carried it over its shoulder into the woods. I could only stare at him. My brain couldn't process this information so late in a shift. A local came up to the counter to get his usual, and the guy told him the story. The local said, That's the Bigfoot that lives near the county line. The truck driver and I looked at this guy like he had two heads. He had to be joking. The trucker paid for his fuel at record speed and left, never to be seen again. The local still insists it was Bigfoot. I just don't go into the woods because I don't know. Account 9. As a crew member of an off-road racing team in Baja, California, Mexico, I got to test drive some rigs and trucks, so technically I'm a truck driver. We were driving south along the Sea of Cortez with a buddy at night on this four-hour dirt road to Gonzaga, which is pretty much in the middle of nowhere in the desert. We saw the lights of a car behind us coming down fast and effectively tailing us. The bastard had bar-mounted headlights on top, or what seemed like it, which were super bright. It was normal, or was, for locals and gringos to get wasted in the nearest, now former due to COVID, spring breaker town, and then go down this road super fast to test their rigs since there's no police there. I tried waving him off to get the guy to keep his lights low since he was blinding us, but he didn't slow down or turn off his roof lights, and it was a dangerous, super dark road. Finally, near a curve by the shore, I found a spot to bail off the road without crashing, and we saw lights passing by us super fast and going straight into the curve. We thought, that's it, he's going to crash into the sea, but the lights didn't fall. They kept going straight into the beach and the sea, then pitched up abruptly to the night sky and disappeared. We didn't say a word for a minute or so. And then my buddy asked, did you see it? I said, the flying truck? We didn't talk about it anymore, as it simply didn't make sense to discuss it or with anyone else when we arrived. Account 10. As a FedEx contractor, I was in one of those big box trucks. Anyway, I finished a long delivery day, and I swear on whatever gods you believe in that I was hearing voices in my cab. It wasn't the radio. It wasn't my tinnitus. It wasn't my subconscious. I was hearing whispered voices in my right ear that were coming from the passenger seat. The voices continued even after I had gotten back to my hub, clocked out and hopped in my own car to go home. They only stopped when I left the parking lot. It only happened that night. I still have no idea what it was because I had ruled everything else out. Account 11. My father has told me this story maybe a thousand times. My family, along with a couple of uncles and my oldest cousin, went on a trip from Mexico City to Acapulco when I was barely a year old. On the way home in the middle of the night, ah, the good old days when you could travel at night, the car broke down, and a police car quickly came to our aid. There were three policemen in the car, and the chief offered to take my dad to the nearest gas station where he could find a mechanic. He told the other two officers to stay with our car. My dad says they seemed absolutely displeased with the order until the chief said, Don't worry, there's a woman and two children. That seemed to calm the two officers. While driving to the gas station in the police car, my dad asked the chief what that was all about. The chief told him that there had been many accidents in that part of the road, which is why they were able to find our car so quickly. All of the accidents involved young men traveling without female or child company. Those who had survived said they crashed because they saw a very beautiful woman next to the road, but once they got close to her, she turned out to be just a rotting corpse staring at them, and they crashed because they were paralyzed by fear. Account 12. I worked at the Nevada Nuclear Test Site, decommissioning old buildings. How much time do you have? One of the creepiest days was when I was sent with an end dump load of non-hazardous material to the general landfill, which I had never been to before. Somehow I missed the turn and ended up at an armed gate with machine guns pointed at me. It was very uncomfortable. Once I explained my mistake, I was quite hastily turned around. Still not knowing exactly where my turn was, a very nondescript desert road was what I was looking for, I headed back. I turned onto the next dirt road I came to and ended up at the sedan crater. I went and smoked a cigarette on the observation deck all by my lonesome. 
My hands were still shaking from the encounter with the armed guards. Another creepy experience was when delivering a hazardous materials load to Area 25. They had begun using robots to guard the area. They were still in beta testing, and someone may have just been messing with me, but the robot perceived my truck as a threat and blocked my ability to move. I went inside the building, and 15 minutes later, it had moved on. Count 13. I've got a few. One of the scariest experiences was when I was parked at a dirt turnout in the Arizona desert between Cameron and Page for the night. This was out in Navajo country, I believe. Around 2 a.m., I woke up to scratching at the window of my sleeper. It went on for about 15 minutes. I was sitting there in the dark, scared to death, with my Bowie knife in hand, wondering what the heck was happening. After it stopped, I waited another 15 minutes before I opened my curtain and looked out the windows. I couldn't see anything outside and was still the only one parked there. The next morning, all I found were some footprints coming to the truck and eventually walking back into the desert. I haven't parked there since. I always stop at a small truck stop in Cameron now. Account 14. Not me. But my mom told me a story about one late night while trucking. Her husband was sleeping in the back, and she was starting to get super tired and struggling to stay awake. She heard another trucker on the CB and started chatting with him. He helped her stay awake for the run until she stopped off at a truck stop so her husband could take over. The next morning, she told her husband what happened, and he told her the CB was broken, making it impossible for anyone to be on the line. Account 15. This isn't a truck story, but moms do have some eerie tales to tell. I like to ask my mom about her side of the family, as I've never really met any of them. Most of them are gone or just not good people, I suppose. Anyway, she told me this story about receiving a phone call from her mom. My grandmother was telling my mom how much she missed her, how she wished she could see my brother being born, and just the sorts of things a mother would talk about. However, there was an existential dread over the conversation and feelings of lament. The conversation ended fairly abruptly with my grandmother saying it was time for her to say goodbye. After hanging up, my mom woke up and then realized her mom had been dead. She believes she was actually in contact with her. It's a chilling story and makes me wish I could have met my grandparents on my mom's side, but they had both passed away due to cancer before I was born. Which leads me to another story about a clock. I don't have all the details on this clock, but essentially, it would start winding counterclockwise when someone had passed. The clock would start turning counterclockwise from time to time, and they would get a little chuckle out of it, not really believing it was connected to someone's death. My grandmother had a hard fight against breast cancer, and sure enough, when she passed, the clock started turning counterclockwise. It gives me chills thinking about it. According to my mom, her dad got so upset with the clock that he threw it across the room and broke it. It's very strange, and I don't have all the details, but it certainly sparks the imagination.